Hello, I'm Dr. Darnell, and welcome to this video about contingency management theory. At the end of this session, you will be able to define contingency theory of management, identify a key pioneer of the contingency approach, understand the nature of contingency theory, discuss key aspects of contingency management, summarize features of contingency management, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of contingency management, and summarize an example of contingency management. Contingency management is an organizational approach where the optimal course of management or leadership action is contingent or dependent upon the external and internal situation. A contingency management approach to management is based on a theory that management effectiveness is contingent or dependent upon the interplay between the application of management behaviors in specific situations. In other words, the way you manage should change depending on the circumstances, and one size of management does not fit all. The contingency management approach to management was influenced by earlier research programs endeavoring to pinpoint effective leadership behavior. During the 1950s, researchers at Ohio State, University of Chicago, and the University of Michigan administered extensive questionnaires measuring a range of possible leader behaviors in various organizational contexts. The research suggested that previous theories, such as Weber's bureaucracy and Taylor's scientific management, had failed because they neglected that management style and organizational structure are influenced by the various aspects of the environment, also known as contingency fact. They concluded that there is not one best way to structure or lead or in and manage an organization. Historically, contingency theory has sought to formulate broad generalizations about the formal structures that are typically associated with best fit and use of different technologies. This perspective originated in 1958 with the work of Joan Woodward, a British professor in organization sociology. She argued that technologies clearly determine the differences in such organizational attributes as span of control, centralization of authority, and formalization of rules and procedures. She formulated the idea that organizational structure is dependent on the types of production technologies employed by the firm. Her idea became the foundation of contingency theory. Her work has had a sustained impact on the fields of innovation and management. She achieved tremendous success in both academia and was the second woman ever to be appointed as chaired full professor at Imperial College in London. And in practice, she was a highly sought after consultant to firms and policy and advisor to governments. In 1970, she published her research in the book titled Industrial Organization, Behavior and Control. The nature of contingency management. Companies or individuals that subscribe to the contingency management theory do so because they believe there is no one process, system, or approach to running a business. The thought here is planning, organize, organizing, leading, and controlling must be tailored to the specific issues or circumstances of a, that a company might face or is facing. Some of the questions to ask in the very beginning by management team in, might include, what is the correct thing for us to do in this situation? Should all departments have the same structure or should each be unique? Should all decisions be made at one location or all locations? Should incentives, what should incentives look like for our team? Managers who subscribe to the Contingency School of Management believe that while you can have systems and theories in place to run your business, the right things to do depend on a complex variety of critical environmental and internal contingencies. There can be different structures and management philosophies in place in each department or business units, but even as even they can go wrong down the road or need to change based on internal or external pressures or circumstances. Thus, there will be plans and systems in place, and they can be the same or different for each department. But should a problem arise, those t systems too should and very likely be changed. While contingency theory has not been around for a long time in relations to other management theories, it is one of the most important aspects of management. Let's face it, things do go wrong. And when they do, businesses have to have some sort of contingency plan in order to survive what went wrong. There are small issues, like the power going out for a while and not having phones, to large issues like all of your data crashing. And contingency planning is one area that will help you work through these emergencies should they arise. Think of it this way. If you do not plan for things like this and when they happen, you are in much deeper trouble and you, you will not know how to react. Key factors of contingency management. There are several key factors or key elements of contingency management that we need to understand so that we can fully grasp the concept. There's contingency planning. Contingency planning is an approach that believes if you want to run a business effectively for any period of time, you must be prepared for emergencies or disruptions that relate to how your business runs. The goal or thought process is that you need to make sure that your company can still run or operate despite anything that might come up that you could stop it from doing that could stop it from doing so. 
Business continuity planning. Business continuity planning is planning and enacting activities that either prevent problems from arising or allow for a plan that should be anticipated risk likely to occur. The preventing of problems from happening like an emergency brake in a car. It's rarely if ever hopefully used, but if needed, it's there in case of an emergency, like your main brakes going out. Thus, it is planned for and in place should a critical part of your company, in this case your brakes, fail. I think it can be. we can all agree that should be a very serious issue. Thus, car manufacturers have planned for by including an emergency brake in a car. Disaster recovery planning. Disaster recovery plan is the plan processes or procedures that a company will take to recover from a disaster. When we say disaster, we mean something very serious, such as your data center burning down. In this case, should something of this magnitude happen, there would be a plan in place to continue working while the issue was addressed, as well as a plan to address the issue should it likely actually happen. It is something like an insurance policy and a plan if something catastrophic happens to your business and you cannot continue to work until it's resolved. Key factors of contingency management. Companies, companies do not just come up with issues or areas that might cause them to lose time or money and need some sort of contingency plan. Rather, they conduct what is called an environmental scan or environmental scanning to understand, or for lack of a better word, what's out there. Environmental scanning is the careful monitoring of an organization's internal environments, aspects within the company's four walls, and external environments, aspects external to the company, to look for early signs of opportunities or threats. Those threats are areas where contingency planning will come into play. Typically, when looking at the internal environment, companies look at several different areas. Human resources, manufacturing, finance, and data networks. These areas will be reviewed in any aspects that might cause the company to be negatively impacted, what to do if there's a strike, for example, or what to do if an important piece of machinery goes down, will be addressed. When looking at external environment, companies look at technology, politics, competitors, the economy. Once again, if they see an issue that could arise, say the election of a new president, they will address that possible issue with contingency planning. Features of contingency management. Management is situational. The contingency approach stresses that there is no one best style of leadership which will suit every situation. The effectiveness of leadership style varies from situation to situation. Management should match or fit its approach to the requirements of the particular situation. Therefore, according to this approach, management is entirely situational. Contingency approach is action-oriented, and it is directed towards the application of systems, concepts, and the knowledge gained from other approaches. The contingency approach builds upon the perspective by following the detail in the nature of relationships between these parts. Contingency theory attempts to determine the predictable relationships between situations, actions, and outcomes. Management must exercise action subject to environmental changes. The contingency approach provides significant contribution in organizational design. It suggests that no organizational design can be suitable for all situations. Rather, the, suit the suitable design is one determined by keeping in view the requirements of the environment, technology, risk, and people. Contingency approach is useful orientation in management. Contingency approach it emphasizes the multivariate nature of organizations and attempts to understand how organizations operate under varying conditions in specific circumstances. This theory suggests organization design and actions which are most appropriate for a specific situation. Advantages of contingency management. The contingency approach is dynamic in nature, so it changes according to the situations. It allows managers to change the policies according to the situation. The contingency approach helps the manager and or leader in, enhance the leadership and decision-making skills. The contingency approach provides options to the employees. It helps them grow and share their ideas to the business. It helps to design the organizational structure and plan the information decision systems. Disadvantages of contingency management. The contingency approach is a complex approach. The suggestion of the approach is very simple, but when it comes to practical imp implementation, it becomes more complex. The contingency approach is basically reactive in nature. Sometimes the handling of situations become hard for the manager. Management must be aware of the complexity and try to determine what would work best in a particular situation in the absence of certain methods, models, and techniques that are relevant to appraise the situation. The contingency approach suffers from an inadequacy of, inadequacy of literature. It is not sufficient to say that managerial action depends on the situation. Managers experience difficulty in analyzing situations in the absence of needed research devices and generalizations for understanding behavior in the situation. 
The primacy of the contingency approach is challenged by several theorists. They argue for one thing, that the contingency approach does not incorporate all aspects of system theory. They hold that it is not yet developed to the point in which it can be considered a true theory. Critics also argue that there is really not much that is new about contingency approach. For example, even the classical theorists such as Fayol caution that management principles must be flexible. Let's look at an, an example of contingency management called a SWOT analysis which is the type of environmental scanning. Environmental scanning is a review of external and internal resources to discover factors that impact a business. The main goal is to identify and consult sources outside and inside the business. Although these sources are un uncontrollable from a business perspective, it's important to consider the decision-making process. One particular method of environmental scanning is the SWOT analysis, or S, Strength, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. Each letter stands for one of those words. The strengths and opportunities are factors within the company, and the weaknesses and threats come from sources outside the company. When companies are putting resources and time towards an environmental scan, they want the results to be as comprehensive as possible. Most scans include a thorough look at competition, economics, technology, legal issues, and social and demographic factors. We can see here examples of internal and external scanning, such as under strengths we have internal resources, which is a type of internal scanning. In other words, how strong are our internal resources? We may also see this same thing under weaknesses. What are our weaknesses of our internal resources? Like maybe we need more training. Qualities that separate you from other competitors is also a type of external scanning. What qualities do we have or what qualities do our competitors have that separate us in the marketplace? And you can look at this graph and see under each one particular aspects that are internal and external. I would suggest that you practice maybe a, your own personal SWOT analysis when it comes to your academic career. What are my strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities or threats to my academic career are there? In this session, we defined contingency theory of management. We identified the key pioneer of the contingency approach. We explored the nature of contingency theory. We discussed key aspects of contingency management. We summarized features of contingency management discuss the advantages and disadvantages of contingency management, and summarize an example of contingency management. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.